Hey everyone, welcome back. So look at this. In my left hand, I've got the iPhone 13 Pro in graphite. This phone, man, this phone has been a legend. It's been my daily driver for years and honestly, it's arguably one of the best iPhones Apple ever made. But in my right hand, I have the new iPhone 17 Pro in silver. And the question we're tackling today is pretty simple, but it's one I know a lot of you are struggling with. Is it finally time? You know, we're in 2026 now. The 13 Pro is five years old. In tech years, that's like ancient. But does it feel ancient? Or is the upgrade to the 17 Pro just like a bunch of fancy specs you won't actually notice? I'm gonna break down everything. The design, that controversial scratch key situation, the new iOS 26 liquid glass update, and of course, the cameras. If you're sitting there with a 13 Pro or maybe even an older phone, and you're confused about whether you need to drop the cash on this upgrade, this video is for you. Let's get into it. First, let's talk about the 13 Pro. I wanna be totally transparent with you guys. I'm holding the graphite model here. And full disclosure, a lot of what I'm saying applies to the 13 Pro Max too. Just, you know, scale up the battery and screen size slightly. So my battery health on this guy had dropped to like 70%. And I'm not gonna lie, it sucked. I was charging it two, maybe three times a day. Standby time was non-existent. It was draining so fast, it felt broken. So I actually did a battery replacement myself recently with an aftermarket part. You can see here in settings, it gives that unknown part message, but honestly, it's back to performing like new. Since swapping it, the performance is snappy and it easily lasts a whole day again. It really reminded me that the hardware inside this phone, the A15 Bionic is still surprisingly capable. But then you pick up the iPhone 17 Pro and the first thing you notice isn't the screen, it's the weight and the material. The 13 Pro is built like a tank. It uses surgical grade stainless steel. It's heavy, shiny, and yes, it's a fingerprint magnet, but it feels incredibly premium. The 17 Pro, on the other hand, uses this new aerospace grade aluminum unibody. It's significantly lighter, which is great for your wrists, but it feels different, less like jewelry, more like a tool. And we have to address the scratch gate. You've probably seen the forum posts and videos the darker colors on the 17 Pro, like that cosmic orange or deep blue, are scratching super easily. People are reporting scraps just from putting it in their pockets or using MagSafe chargers. That is exactly why I went with the silver model. It hides micro scratches way better and honestly, I think it looks the cleanest. It's elegant, minimalist, and pairs perfectly with any cases. If you're upgrading, just know this, the 13 Pro steel bands could take a beating. The 17 Pro's aluminum is softer. I've been using this as my daily driver for three months, keeping it in my pocket with keys sometimes, though I usually use a case and I haven't had issues on the silver. But if you buy the blue or orange one, be careful. Now let's talk about the display. One major reason the 13 Pro is still viable today is that it was the first iPhone to have ProMotion, that 120 Hz refresh rate. If you were coming from a standard iPhone 13 or even a 16, those 60 Hz screens feel ancient by 2026 standards. But since the 13 Pro already has 120 Hz, the smoothness gap isn't as jarring as you might think. However, the experience is different thanks to iOS 26. You guys know about the new liquid glass design language, right? It's beautiful. The icons refract light, the animations are fluid. It's like the software is alive. Surprisingly, the four-year-old 13 Pro handles iOS 26 pretty well, but there are moments. The A15 chip is working hard to render those refraction effects. On the 17 Pro with the A19 Pro chip, it's just effortless. The bezels are razor thin. The brightness is insane. Outdoors, like 3000 nits peak. And that liquid glass UI just flows. It makes the 13 Pro screen look a little dim and dated, even if they are both Pro Motion. Speaking of chips, let's geek out for a second. I ran Geekbench 6 on both of these. The 13 Pro, it's hitting around 2,426 single core and 5,995 multi core. That is still respectable. But the 17 Pro, it posted a 3,822 single core and a massive 9,848 multi core. And for the GPU, it hit 45,913. That is more than double the graphics performance. That is desktop class power. Now I wanna explain what that actually means for you. If we're talking day-to-day -day casual use, checking emails, scrolling through TikTok, texting, honestly, they feel pretty much the same. Both are fast. The 17 Pro might look a split second faster side by side, but in isolation, the 13 Pro holds up really well. But where you really see the difference is with heavy tasks, 
editing video, AAA gaming, or heavy multitasking. This is where the RAM upgrade changes the game. The 13 Pro has 6 gigabytes of RAM and we've all been there where you switch apps and your background app reloads. The 17 Pro has 12 gigabytes of RAM and in my experience it is insane. I basically never lose my background tasks. I can have a game running, switch to edit a photo, reply to a long email and jump back into the game and it's right there waiting. It keeps everything running without struggling. And finally we have to talk about heat. The 13 Pro can get pretty warm when you push it but with the 17 Pro you get Apple's own vapor chamber cooling system. A first for iPhone paired with that new aluminum unibody. That combination makes the thermal management next level. Even when I'm doing a lot of heavy tasks or gaming for a while, this phone doesn't even get hot. It doesn't throttle, it doesn't struggle, it just stays cool and performs. Okay, this is the big one, the camera. If you're a content creator like me, this is why you upgrade. The 13 Pro has 12 megapixel sensors. They're great, but they show their age when you crop in. The 17 Pro features a triple 48 megapixel setup. The detail is just ridiculous. But the real game changer is the zoom. The 13 Pro has a 3x telephoto. The 17 Pro moves to a 4x optical zoom. And I actually prefer this over the 5x zoom from the 16 Pro. The 4x is just a better focal length for portraits. It's not too zoomed in but gives you that beautiful compression. And because it's a 48 megapixel sensor you can crop into 8x lossless zoom. Going from 3x on the 13 Pro to a usable 8x on the 17 Pro opens up so many new angles. And for video, the 17 Pro shoots 4K at 120fps. The slow motion is buttery smooth. The 13 Pro tops out at 4K 60fps. Plus, the new front camera on the 17 Pro allows for wide landscape selfies while holding the phone vertically. It's a fun feature that I think we're gonna see everyone copying soon. Now, it's not all perfect. Let's talk about Apple intelligence. The 13 Pro runs iOS 26, but the neural engine is older. It doesn't support the full suite of on-device generation that the 17 Pro does. Honestly, for me, it's not a deal breaker. I usually just use ChatGPT or Gemini anyway because they're often more powerful than the beta feeling Apple intelligence. So don't upgrade just for the AI. However, do upgrade for the port. The 13 Pro is stuck on lightning. That's USB 2.0 speed, like 480 megabits per second. Moving a 4K video file takes a long time. The 17 Pro is USB-C with USB 3.0 speeds up to 10 gigabits per second. It's literally 20 times faster. I can plug an SSD right into my 17 Pro and record directly to it. If you film a lot, lightning is painful to go back to. Finally, battery. My 17 Pro is at 100% health with 68 cycles and the battery life is just wow. The efficiency of the A19 chip combined with the larger battery means I end the day with 30 to 40% left, even with heavy use. The 13 Pro, even with my new battery, just can't compete with that efficiency. So to wrap this up with a real verdict, look, I still have a lot of love for this iPhone 13 Pro. If you just put a fresh battery in it like I did, it's honestly still a capable premium phone that handles 90% of what normal people need. If you're just texting, scrolling Instagram and taking the occasional photo of your lunch, you do not need to spend over a thousand dollars today. The 13 Pro is still that good, but is the upgrade to the iPhone 17 Pro worth it? If you are coming from a 13 Pro, we are looking at a 5 year gap now. This isn't just an incremental bump, it feels like a different class of device. You aren't just getting better specs, you're getting a fundamental shift in how you use the phone. You're moving from 12 megapixel cameras to a triple 48 megapixel fusion system where you can crop in and still have perfect detail. You're getting that 4bex optical zoom that pushes to 8bex lossless, something the 13 Pro can't touch. You're getting a display that is actually legible at the beach because it's twice as bright. And for me, the biggest one, USB-C, being able to transfer a video file in seconds instead of minutes or plug in a hard drive changes this from a phone into a computer. So here's my advice. If your 13 Pro is barely hanging on, screen cracked, battery dead, face ID failing, or if you are a creator who needs that camera and USB-C speed, make the jump. This is the year. The difference is massive, but a word of caution. The hardware is incredible, but that scratch gate thing is real on the painted aluminum models. If you buy the 17 Pro, do yourself a favor, get the silver one. It hides the wear much better than the blue or orange. And please put a case on it immediately. Thanks for watching guys, I really want to know where you stand on this. Are you Team 13 Pro holding strong for another year or are you finally making the upgrade? Let me know in the comments. Catch you in the next one.